Welcome back into the studio, creative friends. I, um, today is Mixed Media Basics, and I thought it might be good to show you three different ways of using marble powder. Now, I do carry this in the store, but I've never really gone over using the marble powder. And so I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you three different ways of using it um, in your, <clears throat> excuse me, in your um, medium arsenal. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to use it to thicken up paint. To go from, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a frog in my throat, coffee time. using it in um, to take a medium body paint and making it more of a heavy body paint. So when I'm working, uh, usually you'll see me using a plastic palette knife when I'm using mediums. But because I am working with acrylic paint and I am mixing, I prefer to use a metal palette and I like this uh, almost spatula type it's a number two um, spatula type of palette knife so it's got the short rounded curve um, but whatever you choose to work with whether it's a, a paintbrush or um, whatever you do need something to mix with I like to do it on a piece of plastic this is stencil making plastic you can even use those um, cutting boards, those flimsy cutting boards, as long as it's smooth on one side. Now this is stencil making plastic and so it's gritty on one side and smooth on the other. So I use the smooth side to do that. And like I said, I do have this marble powder in my shop. I have carried it for years and it is a huge seller, but I thought it would be fun to get on and show you some ways to use it. Um, I will link everything down below as always. So I'm going to start off with a cadmium green, rather medium body paint. And I'm just going to add a little dab, a little dab will do ya. Now this is very lightweight, four ounces is what I sell these at. And that is a lot of powder. I've had to pack it down quite heavily to get four ounces into these containers. So I start off small and I build from there. So I I didn't I don't even measure. I just kind of go in. And I want to get this all incorporated into the paint before I do any adjusting or adding of anything because this marble powder can fly away. There is no real smell to it, but I would refrain from uh, breathing in the dust. So you really want to get this incorporated really well. And you can already see how much it's thickening up that paint. We didn't hardly even use any. Now, the longer you kind of incorporate it and smash it, the smoother your paint will be. So if you want something that has a little bit more texture to it, then you can leave it and not continue on. I just wanna make sure that I have it a good thick consistency as a really super heavy body paint. That's what I'm looking for right now. And you can see it's gotten smoother and it's gotten thinner. So even though this is wet, I can put it in here as long as I've gotten most of it off because it's so thick, it's not going to sit in here. And I'm just going to kind of tap this in and get some on here because I'm just going to move in very, very small increments. And 
and you can see this is so thick that it's not I really am shaking that and it's just now starting to to move down okay. stencil this is from uh, paper artsy stencil and this is a piece of pretty thick watercolor paper and I'll have that linked below as well I'm going to show you how you can this really isn't a very good palette knife for going through a stencil but we're gonna wing it you can see how thick this is because we are gonna go through this stencil with this paint and a palette knife. And look how crisp that line is. That's because we got it so nice and thick. Just lovely. And you definitely want to make sure you get stuff cleaned off. I'm just going to press this up here and get a majority of that off of it. So now I'm just going to get some more of this and show you some. It really has, it's going to hold its peaks. And its height because it's got so much... It's so thick now with that marble powder, it's given it a lot of structure. And you can really see, you can, if you work it till it starts to dry, you can get some really nice texture going on, even if you pull it up. You can really see that you can really work it nicely so that is using it to thicken up paint so it works very wonderful for that I'll put that to the side I'll be right back I'm gonna get this cleaned up and then I'm going to show you another method for using marble powder all right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the marble powder to create a heavy body gesso from regular gesso. So I'm gonna use my regular gesso. Okay, so you wanna get yourself a dollop of gesso onto your plastic palette and your mixing palette. And again, I'm, we're gonna start off small and just take a little scoop to incorporate in with the just and same as we just did with the paint we're going to really incorporate that in evaluate it before we add any more now because gesso already has marble powder in it uh, you're gonna and it is gritty you're not going to mix as long as you would per se for the paint but we do want to go to a really heavy body and that is just too thin so similar to what I did before I'm just gonna tap my palette in to the powder a couple of times and then bring it back and incorporate again and then reevaluate so I want this even thicker than that. I want a super heavy body gesso. So I'm gonna get my palette loaded. I did that a couple of pats. So really what you're looking for is what will work for your application. I found that pouring onto from the jar is a big no-no. It just makes a huge mess. And there's particles flying in the air. and That is not going anywhere. It didn't even really loop off the... There we go. We got a little bit more going. That is super thick. 
All right, that's about where I'm wanting it. I'm gonna pull out another piece of that watercolor paper and another stencil. This is a Dina Wakely stencil. And we're gonna just use that gesso to go through a stencil just to demonstrate how thick this is. And you can really see how thick that is. And we can even get some more of this. This is not really the palette knife to do palette work with, but like what I'm doing here, but you can see, you can really get some lovely structure going with how thick this is. So that is adding the marble powder to gesso to make it a super heavy body gesso. I'm gonna get this cleaned up and we'll come back. All right, the next thing I'm gonna demonstrate is making gesso. So for this, I'm going to use a matte gel medium and the marble powder and again, my palette knife. So you're going to take a dollop of your gel medium and to that you're going to scoop out a generous portion of the powder. And again, you are going to slowly incorporate that in with the back of this palette, uh, palette knife. Now I, you can add a little bit of titanium white paint to this mixture, but I like to do it after I already have that marble powder already incorporated pretty much at the consistency that I want my gesso to be. So I'm looking for a fairly firm gesso. Not as super heavy body as what we made from the pre-existing gesso, but thick enough that you're going to use it with a palette knife. It could use some more but work, but we're going to work it more as we incorporate this titanium white paint. We're not gonna use much. We just wanna help keep that opaqueness. Now the marble powder helps with that, but I like the brightness that adding a dash of titanium white gives to this. So you can see this is not as thick as the last one we did. It really is, it is moves really easily. So this, you could use this with a paintbrush or you could use this with a palette knife. So I have another piece of that uh, watercolor paper. That's all right. So I just wanna show how this will still cover this up. if you were to use it over some of your collaged items. So you can see we can get some structure just like we would with gesso if we wanted to um, use our palette knife. And then I'm gonna come in with a clean brush and show you if we wanted to come in and push some of this back from our collage that we can really do that. And I like to use my gesso to do dry brushing 
and you can really use it just like you would regular gesso. All right, so the fourth thing we're gonna do with the marble powder is we are gonna create a modeling paste. Now, this is my recipe for it. There are a lot of different ways that people do this, but this is the method that I like to use. So I'm gonna use some gesso. And you can pre-make your gesso. You do not have to use um, gesso that you've purchased. You can use like, if I would have thought about it, I could have used the one I just made. And I'm gonna use some matte gel medium. In equal parts. And then, again, I'm gonna fill my the corner of my palette up and start incorporating some marble powder into this mixture. Now, if I were going to make a modeling paste that was clear, then I would need to use clear gesso. But you have to remember that marble powder has that white. It's not gonna really be clear. It's gonna be more um, on the opaque side. Not, it'll probably be um, translucent, but not clear. If you wanted to make your modeling paste in a color, you could add color to this. Very similar to super heavy body gesso that we made earlier, except for it is a tad thicker, is what we're going for. So now that that's incorporated well, I am going to do the pat, pat, pat and bring in another portion of the marble powder and mix that in, incorporate it well. If you ever get too much of the marble powder, then you would come back in with some gel medium. Okay, so I'm gonna come back in with some more of the marble powder that pat pat motion on the back of my palette. All right, as you can see, that is super thick. It is not going anywhere. It is like a paste now. So it's great for um, using through a stencil. build this up nice and thick so we can get some height off of this so you can really see how nicely that works. I got some coming through here but I uh, moved my stencil there. 
but you can see how where I didn't move my stencil, I got a really nice crisp line. And this really is nice and thick paste that you could really work with. Now, do I buy gesso and marbling, uh, modeling paste and all that? Yeah, I do. I buy it. I use so much of it that it's not cost effective for me to make batches of this. Um, it would be super time consuming and um, just not cost effective. However, in a pinch, when I find that I need something very heavy, I know that I have this on hand and I can build up what I already have to get to what I need. And it's just nice to have it in my arsenal of mediums to use when I'm working on different projects or different pieces, depending on the need. But you can definitely see how this is. It's uh, a really handy to have around. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let these dry um, completely here for us and then kind of get some color on these and uh, at least these and uh, really show you how uh, nicely um, like the heavy body gesso um, still works as a gesso on this watercolor paper and um, the regular gesso as well as the modeling paste. So once these get dry, then I'll be back and we'll do some working on these just to show you that and bring that out. I just wanted to take an opportunity just to show you by how this uh, acrylic paint that has been thickened with the marble powder uh, responds to liquid media on it. All right, this is the super heavy gesso that we created with the marble powder. And it has dried completely. And we have this wonderful texture on here from the stencil. And then we did some application here with just a palette knife. And I wanted to just bring in a liquid color that so we could see it absorb into the areas where the gesso wasn't and see how it reacts against the gesso that we created. Um, so this is where we use some regular gesso and we added the marble powder to make it a super heavy gesso. So I'm going to apply some of this India ink that has been uh, made into a spray. So this is, hmm, about 40, I think I used, uh, actually I think this is 20 drops to 40 drops of India ink to about two ounces of water. So this is the aqua. And this is, I'll go in with the light in, with the spray and then I might come in with some of the concentrated just to give it some contrast. I'm gonna give it a moment to really soak in to that watercolor paper and um, see how the difference that we get between the gesso areas and the watercolor. See how that gesso just holds up to the medium being added to it. I'm gonna give it a little dry. I'll let that's dry. 
I'm gonna go ahead and add some it didn't it soaked in a little bit right in here you could see how the gesso repelled it um, it's kind of hard because it's kind of flashed out in this light but I'm gonna go ahead and add some of the India ink concentrated I am gonna first add a little bit of water so it flows really nicely But you can really see that that gesso is holding up quite well to all the liquid that we're throwing at it. And again, this is that super heavy gesso that may be made with the marble powder and the pre-made gesso. Just added the marble powder to make it into the super heavy, thick gesso. All right, so you can really see how that really held up. There's no flaking off of that. A lot of the times when you um, do this with cornstarch, it just ends up flaking off the surface of the paper. This is sticking very well. And um, where the gesso is, it really repels that color. Yeah, we did have some wicking here due to the saturation levels of water in there, um, but it really held up well. I am going to kind of saturate this, trying to get some of the, see what we can get in terms of reaction. So this was the completely homemade gesso made with the matte medium gel the marble powder and a little bit of acrylic paint in the titanium white. So I've sprayed it down a little bit with water and now I'm gonna come in with some coffee. Just really get that saturated and see how, if that gesso reacts at all to the liquid that we're applying to the surface. We did collage some on here so we can see how that handled having uh, some dry brushing going over it. And you can see, even with that coffee added, we have no lift off of that. Um, it just sewed on there very nicely. We still have no flaking, nothing going on there from that uh, homemade gesso that we made. So that is pretty awesome with that coffee staining on it. All right, so we are on our last sample here. This is where we made modeling paste. And this is very stuck to the page, uh, to the substrate. Uh, I was able to get it very thick, but I think you'll be able to see it better if I get something that will kind of color that will absorb on here. Um, so you can see how crisp those lines are that where I use that stencil. Got some blue jout where I lifted a little bit here and then again here where I shifted it. But really when I had a good connection with the stencil and the paper, I got a super crisp thick line there because I was able to just layer up really thickly that modeling paste. So I'm gonna use some uh, Distress Spray Stain on here in peeled paint, uh, just so that we can see the that modeling paste pop out a little bit. 
I kind of saturate it with some water on that watercolor paper just so this moves a little bit better. Get that to move around. I love me some field paint. One of my favorite colors in the Ranger Distress line. And here you can really see that texture that we got from that modeling paste. It held up very well under the water, uh, all the liquids that we threw at it. So you can really see that that is a nice alternative uh, to having modeling paste. If you want to make your own small batch, um, that marbling powder is, that marble powder is the way to go. So I hope you have enjoyed this session of Mixed Media Basics, uh, where we review through uh, what you can do with marble powder. I will have everything listed below for you. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment and I respond to those. And uh, if you are liking what you're seeing here on my channel, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thank you.